Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today I'm going to take two popular open source game development tools and mash them together. And you're going to understand why in just a minute. In the one corner, we have GB Studio. I've covered this a couple of times in the past on this channel. It is a really cool game development platform for creating Game Boy, Game Boy Color style games. I'll show you this in action in just a minute. The only problem is it can only export out ROMs that you can actually run on literal Game Boy hardware and emulators, etc. Or it can export out websites, but it cannot actually export out executable. So if you wanted to publish your creation that you did in GB Studio and you wanted to put it up on, say, Steam or share it with a friend with a Windows computer, you couldn't do that until now. Enter part two of this equation, and that is the Godot game engine. So what we've got now is a GD extension for Godot that enables you to load and interact with GB Studio created ROMs. It is called Godot Boy which is not a bad name actually. And this is available as a GD extension and it enables you to load up ROMs inside of Godot projects. This is an open source project by the way, and I'm using this sample here available from their GitLab site. I will have all the relevant links down below if you wanna go ahead and check this out. And now I'm gonna show you how all of this works. So we're gonna start things off with a quick primer of GB Studio. If you've never heard of it before, this is an awesome, all-in-one game editing environment. It's aimed at being really beginner friendly, but it actually creates some fairly high performance ROMs in the end, Game Boy style ROMs. And you've got all the tools you can expect here. You've got world building tools for creating tile maps, etc. You have the linkages. So here you can see your initial logo. Uh, and then we move over to the title screen and you can see this, the programming is done over here. This is the logic for what menu choice was done, what to do on the menu, or you can see pause the script until you press A, B, start or select. And then what we do is fire off the scene, for example, the parallax example scene. This is set up as a platformer style scene. It starts off at this point. You can see you can put entities into the world, such as this sign over here. So let me just try and click it. Here we go, signpost. And then you can see it does on interaction, it will display this message, and then you've got on update and on so on. And each one of these is added as an event. There are a ton of events. You string these events together to create your game. On top of that, you have a number of other tools built in here. So here's your game world. You do have uh, scripts available for a variety of different things, all the various different variables for your world. Uh, you can create actors. So here, for example, is a save point. You can have various different enemies. So eventually we've got this links onto a space battle style game. Uh, we've got a first person selection style games, etc. So you can string a number of different game styles together. You, and here you can see how menus work, how the various different options are available, how they can link off to various different sites from where you're at. It is a very cool system. And when you are ultimately done with it, and by the way, you also have tools in here for sprites, for managing animated sprites and so on and creating them. We also have tools in here for image viewing, sound effects. Uh, most impressively, we've got a mod tracker style music maker in here as well. A uh, system for doing dialogue. So if you're doing conversations, you've got the conversation points, etc. So everything you need to create a Game Boy style game in a very easy manner is all here, which is really, really quite cool. And then what you do is you take that over to Godot. Again, I'm using that example I showed you from GitLab. Uh, I put it down. I imported uh, via the asset library. By the way, this is available there. So what you do, go to the asset library, and then you're going to search for Godot boy and you will find it is implemented as a GD extension that you can then add to your project. Then once you've got your project set up, what you're going to find is uh, it's really straightforward with how it works. What you do is basically take your generated ROM. So over here uh, in GB Studio, so this guy right here, when you're done, you actually export out your game to a ROM. So once it's saved as a ROM or, or here, we export a ROM out like so. Then we take that ROM file and we put it in this directory called ROMs. So game.gb, that is what will load in your ROM. So here we are in the world of Godot. I'm gonna just show you this, how this looks at first, and then we'll come back to it. By the way, this is very loud. So here is your game. This was what we were creating. Again, if you look over here, you're starting. Um, if I, oh, my controller's turned off. All right, let me just turn my controller back on. So I actually have access to the button and then here and then your game like so jump interact interact and then you're gonna notice I get to the end I hit the the level zone here we can go ahead and jump on a house we can go back to our other zone etc so this is how uh, all these various different pieces work together this is your ROM running inside of a Godot application 
So the question is, why would you want to do this? Well, the number one reason is so that you can go ahead and then do this. So I can come in here, I can say, all right, I want to go ahead, export this out to Windows. Uh, I could even come in here and say encrypt it and encrypt down to my PCK, which is going to include the ROM file in it. So then people can't just simply extract the ROM and play it on their own. So in case you want to go ahead and sell your project or whatever, here I'm going to create it for Windows. We'll export that out. We pick where we want it to go. So I'll just here and overwrite that. Uh, and then boom, it went ahead and created our project. And then what you'll notice here is I go back over I don't know why I ran it twice. Go back over to my downloads folder. That's where I exported it out. So there is the generated exe. We'll go ahead and run that. And boom, it is exactly the app we just looked at a second ago, just compiled for uh, running as an executable. So you could then publish that up to Steam or do whatever the hell you wanted with it, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing you're going to notice is exactly how this all hits together. So what you're done in their example, anyways, you can see they've got this simple main, and here is your entry point. So this is loading the ROM in. So this is loading in that, that specific ROM file and setting it into this run in this texture rec right over here. So then that is where it will all run. You've also got here controls. So example, I can have a pause menu when we go ahead and run this one. So we'll go back here again uh, and then I think it was escape, but there you go. So you see a pause menu, a volume slider, etc. So you can actually add controls that control how your ROM is actually going to run, uh, which is actually pretty cool. Another thing you're going to notice, there's that pop-up going on over and over again, that little debug window. If you want to get rid of that, because you notice it's not necessarily here, that's actually implemented this way. So go into your um, globals. Uh, your auto run. So you see that debug tool is implemented right here. So it's enabled over here. By the way, you have control over the debug tools by coming down here. So open up that scene. This is the debug tool. That's that little window that was getting overlaid. So you got like the memory debugger, etc., going on with that. That is all being implemented. So this will actually show you how you can interface with your ROM uh, that is running with code on the other hand. So you can kind of uh, hook these things together. So you can actually have multiple ROMs potentially switch between them. Uh, this is actually wrapping an emulator inside that is executing inside of the Godot game engine. It's kind of a neat concept, but ultimately the end goal is this enables you to load up and run your uh, Game Boy games inside of the Godot game engine. So you can actually do some really cool stuff with this. So, so here, so this is being run to this texture that we have inside of here. So we got this texture right there. What I could actually do is come up here and say, all right, um, scale. So then we're gonna stretch it to fit. And I'll go ahead and then we'll run that. And now what you're gonna see is our game is wide. Of course, it's gonna look like garbage. Uh, but, and again, this can be turned off. You've also got tools down here for memory to jump in and see what's going on there. Uh, so you do have control a little bit directly over the ROM. So here is our game. Now it's running in um, our wide aspect ratio because I changed how that was set up. So that's how easy that is to do. And this will ultimately, again, enable you to take your uh, GB Studio authored game, anything that you created over here that you wished. So you can use this really simple to use um, game creation system. And then if you like what you've got and you want to share it with a wider audience, all you do is install the uh, Godot Boy extension. And then you've got the ability to publish these things out to other platforms, which is again, a very cool feature. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today. GB Studio, if you've never checked it out, it is a fun thing to play with. It just makes making games fun. And I just kind of wish they turned this into a more general purpose game engine because it does so much more than just GB Studio kind of style games and the workflow is wonderful but what this allows you to do is take Godot take GB Studio and thanks to the Godot Boy GD extension you can actually take those games that you've authored with GB Studio and then compile them into executables add uh, start menus over them do scene transitions so you can have various different ROMs etc a very cool project so let me know what you think both of GB Studio and of Godot Boy specifically all right a little bit on the niche side but very cool nonetheless let me know what you think comments down below I will talk Talk to you all later. Goodbye.